everyone. My name is Catherine Fazio and we are here in the beautiful mountains of California in the area of Big Sur. And we are on the property of Gary Widening and we are here to ask him some questions how he become a horse massage. So Gary, um, how in the world did you pick up this profession of horse massage, especially since it was almost totally unheard of in the horse world back in the 90s? Uh, that's, uh, it's a, I'll tell you the little story. I was actually, I had never heard of equine massage. And I was uh, rehabbing one of my clients, a human client that had been injured in a horse-related accident. And as I was uh, working with her one day, she said, you know, I love to do something with horses when you get me fixed up. And, um, but I don't know what to do. I said, well, why don't you massage horses? And she asked if I ever had massaged a horse. I go, no, but it wouldn't be any different than a person. What was kind of interesting was, since, since I had never heard of equine massage, I never really thought of massaging animals. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I even suggested that she would do such a thing. But out it came, and, and uh, so uh, I go, well, no, it wouldn't be any different than doing a person. I said, tell you what, draw me a picture of a horse. I will figure out the meridian lines and the, and the key acupressure points. <coughs> and I'll go ahead and uh, bring a horse over to the gym Sunday and, uh, and we'll work on it and see what happens. And, and so I was just going to show her how to do it and let her go from there. And uh, little did I know what I was to experience during that hour, hour and 15 minutes, whatever it took, would change my whole life and change the direction in which I was going. And so when, when people ask me that question, how did I choose that, how did I choose this profession? I guess the right answer is I didn't, it chose me. And once I experienced and felt so empowered uh, in, in, in massaging a horse, I just had to do another horse and another horse and another horse and uh, started going to horse shows. Mm -hmm. Eventually people said, can you teach me to do this? I said, yes, I can. And I bought a little ranch in 90, 1998 and started my school. So this is how you came up with the concept of your school program? The, the, well, when I started doing my school, I didn't really have a concept. I didn't know what I was going to do. I said, okay, we have anatomy, we have massage, we have marketing. And so I, I started on that. I started just with a, a uh, uh, first I started, a, my first two students were uh, mother and daughter and I actually did a two week program with them where I had uh, one week for the horses and one week to teach them how to massage people. And then I thought, well, no, I can't do the two week program because uh, we, uh, I don't want to jump through all the hoops that California would require as far as a, an official school. So I backed away from that, but I did keep some of the techniques, like headache release technique. I do teach that in my program. But I, it was kind of like a trial and error. I, I started out with the typical school mentality of anatomy, massage, and marketing. And pretty soon I just moved away from that and started creating my own concepts as I, and my own, as I saw the need, I eventually introduced things like saddle fitting, hoof care, mm -hmm. the really important things that we needed to know. And I just phased out all the useless anatomy that just served no purpose in the real world. Yeah, okay. And also, Gary, honestly, is it really possible to teach someone how to massage a horse in only five days? And also, what qualifies you to say you can do so? Ah. Okay, well, I, I guess this would be a good time to read a letter to you. Um, one of my students, when you go onto my website, uh, you're going to uh, see some, some really good letters from students. For, I guess first, let me talk about my, my qualifications. I guess that's always important to know your teacher's qualifications. Um, <clears throat> I've been in the health and fitness business since 1963, and uh, this article was uh, Massage Magazine as the anniversary issue, the third anniversary of uh, Massage Magazine, and that was got me a lot of notoriety. It was a lead article, and pretty soon my uh, name started becoming well established in this field, and so were the results. As you notice on the cover, this is. Uh, this fellow here is a double amputee. This is Bob Wheeland, 
the double amputee that walked across America on his arms. He lost his legs in Vietnam. So I traveled with Bob after he had already done his LA and New York City marathons. And the, <coughs> the second year he did New York, I lowered his New York time by over 17 hours and LA by over 18 hours by working on him continually going uh, the 26.2 miles. Well, I already had established myself in the human field as, uh, as a world-class trainer. So then I started developing students, and of course, nothing says it better than the students' own um, experiences and, and what they achieve. I'm going to read a letter from one of my students named uh, Berta. Um, <clears throat> Berta is, uh, she came to my program with just the, she had a, a lady that was massaging her horse, and she wasn't real happy with what the lady was doing. So she let her go. She said, I'm just going to learn this myself. So she sent for my, my three-part DVD on massage, stretching, and saddle fitting. And uh, she went through it and applied it. And she liked the results. But she said, I think I still want to go to Gary's school. So she came to my school. I just fine-tuned a couple little things that she was doing, and, she, and off she went. Well, she went out and immediately went into uh, working at the racetracks, and she, uh, I think Del Mar was where she went. And uh, she got, was getting so, such tremendous results. Um, and of course, it's, I always say, it's, the bottom line is results. Can you get results? That's what qualifies me to tell you that I can, I can teach you, or, or you know, just because Gary Whiting teaches you doesn't mean you can do it necessarily, but what are you doing? What are you achieving? Well, I want to read something about uh, what Berta says here. Gary, I just have to write this note, and I hope you'll share it with your future students. As you know, I came to your school just so I could help my own horse when I became dissatisfied with a therapist who had been working on him. Little did I know what was to come. What you teach at your school, your massage techniques, is powerful stuff. I mentioned that I was going to your school to my chiropractor who, unbeknownst to me then, is an owner of some racehorses. He said he would love to try it out on his horse, or horses. So I, went, so I want to share with you that just three weeks home from your school, I was at Hollywood Park Racetrack massaging horses. I must say the trainer seemed captivated with my first horse, horse's demeanor during the massage. The second one I did, he said he couldn't believe it. It was the same horse and that he, had seen, that he had never seen him so calm before. And of course, the faces of the horses uh, made what is a telltale sign. So she goes on to talk about her success and the trainers really liked what she was doing. She wrote me a, um, um, a letter later on. She had gone to uh, Del Mar and she worked on a horse called um, Charlie's moment, but Charlie's moment could not do over six and a half furlongs, and, and Charlie's moment would just, that was it, and run off steam, head to the back, and all the horses would pass him. Well, they were entering Charlie's moment into a seven furlong race. Now, of course, Charlie's moment has never done over six and a half furlongs, so they were very concerned that this horse would even make a, any kind of a showing. Berta said to them, tell you what, I'll make a deal with you. Let me work on this horse two times. I will work on him a week before the race, and then I will work on him the night or the day before the race. And if he doesn't win, you don't pay me. Well, they said, all right, that's the deal. So now the race starts, and Charlie's moment not only finished the seven furlongs, but he won the seven furlongs. And so a, a sheik from Dubai bought Charlie's moment for $280,000, $288,000, and they won $60,000 off of him. Now, those are the stories you want to hear. That's, that's what qualifies me to teach a person how to massage a horse in five days. Mm -hmm. it's, the bottom line is always going to be results. Yes. So, and also, where do you see your program going in the future? Well, as you uh, in, in, as you start out in the introduction, um, you talked about the beautiful coast of 
uh, California, Big Sur. Um, my campsite's up here, developing a program that really helps my students go beyond other students. I've often said that the difference between, between a good massage and a great massage is a good massage comes from here, from the thinking process. A great massage comes from here. When you come to my program up in Big Sur, if you were to try to describe the program, you'd have, you might look up glamping, Google glamping, G-L-A-M-P-I-N-G, and basically it's glamorized camping. Mm -hmm. And so what I have set up is a place, that we're sitting actually in one of our, one of my campsites here, mm -hmm. and it's designed to give glamorized camping to my students so that they can connect to this beauty, so that they can forget about their cell phones, so that they can forget about their issues and problems back home and give them a chance to just put some pieces together and slow down long enough within these five days. And not only just the program I teach is, is excellent, but <clears throat> the whole experience, you know, we, we have our cowboy breakfast in the morning and a simple little lunch in the afternoon. And then we work on the horses and, and um, then we have a chef that prepares our uh, meals for us in the evening, gourmet meals, uh, organic, right out of the gardens, down tree bones. And so we get elegant dining and camping. And so it's a glamorous dining and camping. So there you go, you've got glamping. So where I see my program going is, is to help people connect better with um, life, maybe find some answers as to how to be happy in life, being able to go after their dreams is the big one for me. Uh, helping people realize that whatever dream you can dream, you can achieve it. That's the incredible human potential. Mm -hmm. And you can't realize that any more than up here in these mountains. Uh, some traveling, I want to go abroad. I want to do some schools in other countries. Uh, it's just kind of wherever, wherever, wh whatever door is open, I like the adventure. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of where I see. Oh, I'm thinking about, I'm giving some thought to maybe an in-home study course for those who can't make it to, to my place. Um, Interesting. Uh, and what are the advantages, advantages of you going out to others rather than they traveling to you? Cost. Mm -hmm. the, I'm not a real expensive program, but I'm not cheap either. Uh, you know, it's almost $2,300 for my program, just shy of that. And of course, you get all your meals, you get your lodging, you get your outings, you get everything. You get your insurance when you graduate. You, um, you're, you're basically ready to go. And that, that in itself is, is uh, by simplifying and taking care of all those expenses myself, it makes it less hassle for my students. But <clears throat> um, by going out, it saves people a lot of money, and I, I can. Uh, usually do a program like let's say you call me and say I want, I'd like to come to your school so I say well how would you like to put a program together in your area and so I would tell you how to do that and basically you would put the program together you would get your education free mm -hmm. and then I would lower the price to about fifteen hundred dollars per student for a five-day program and would take five or six students and uh, and it would uh, um, give me a little chance to travel around uh, on a paid vacation and a, a chance for you to save airfare, uh, a chance for you to um, save a little bit of money uh, at each of the students and, and for, of course for you for doing the work it would give you a chance to uh, get your education paid for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have expressed um, concerns regarding things you are seeing on YouTube. Um, what are they? Can you explain more about Oh, uh, yeah. You, you know, you, 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 these days, everybody is a good actor, an actress. Um, there's a lot of knowledge showing up on YouTube now. Uh, YouTube is a great tool. It's a wonderful tool for advertising, but it's being abused. It's really being abused. There's a lot of garbage out there. There's a lot of stuff that just simply is not... It's a good education, and some people use it for entertainment. 
But there have been some some mis, uh, misstated facts, if you want to call them, uh, in the human massage field for years. And now I see, since this has become so popular, the equine massage, I'm, I'm starting to see those same um, errors being taught. One, one error is they taught years ago that you always massage towards the heart. Well, the reason they gave didn't make a bit of sense because the blood runs two directions in the legs. It runs down and it runs up. It doesn't just run towards the heart. And they said, well, the, you know, everything will pool around the ankles. Well, that's not true. Uh, but somebody started that and, and that, they passed that knowledge on to students. Um, <clears throat> with the uh, horses, there is a uh, school out there that it, where its owner teaches that a horse will not stand for more than an hour. Well, I've had horses stand all day long. I've had them stand in one session for three hours. Um, <clears throat> that's not true. Uh, yet, there are people who make these statements. Um, something I recently saw on YouTube was uh, um, you stay away from the neck. Well, in Shiatsu Massage, we work the neck as the number one place to start. Um, so I'm starting to see a lot of experts without portfolios appear on YouTube. And what was interesting, when I present something factual, I look at how many hits come onto mine, and I look at the stuff that's not factual, and I see there's a lot of hits on there. And I'm thinking to myself, well, those 13,000 hits or 15,000, whatever it was, there was 15,000 people that were lied to. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing that, again, a lot of these people are just new, they're just right out of school, and they're saying things. You know, for, for another example, on the, on the human hand, you have the large intestine four. Uh, that's a headache release point. It's, um, if you overstimulate that point, that acupressure point, within the first three months of pregnancy, it will lead to a miscarriage. If you want a quick delivery, you place a needle, acupuncture needle at that point, and you have a quick delivery. Well, I had a student that went to the same school I did, and she was saying that you never, 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 never work this point on a pregnant woman. I go, wait a second, this is not true. I said, you don't overstimulate this point on a pregnant woman. You can work it, and move, but don't sit there and overstimulate it. And she wanted to argue with me on it. Well, I said, go talk to our teacher, go talk to Dr. Kaneko. Well, Dr. Kaneko chewed her out and uh, set her straight, and he was not happy. A, a graduate student who had already been in the practice, and plus I managed his school, and he bawled her out for even challenging me like that. <clears throat> and he set her straight that, no, Gary is correct in what he's saying. So right out of my own school, there were people going out and making statements uh, that were not correct. And so I always look at what has a person accomplished, what is their, their track record, show me their portfolio, let me see what you've accomplished in life, really in life, in this, in this field. And, and, and if you have, then I'm going to take my hat off to you and I'm going to um, spend some time with you and try and learn something from you as well as another professional. But I'm hearing a lot of and seeing a lot of stuff that simply is incorrect. And a lot of people are going onto YouTube and they're listening to this and they're, of course, they're buying into that and it's an error. And they'll, of course, they'll shotgun it and they'll s spread it out there. Uh, amongst the thousands and thousands and thousands of other people. Mm -hmm. And so I'm seeing that, that wonderful tool being abused because of misinformation. So have you ever been kicked or heard working with horses? They're quite the powerful animal, especially race horses. <laughs> the nag from hell. I'll tell you about the, the, the story of the nag from hell. I gotta have a glass of wine on this and a little sip of wine. <laughs> The answer is yes, but have I ever gotten hurt? No. Um, 
by way of my background, uh, as a kid grew, growing up, I was, I was a pugilist. I loved a good fight. And I, I was an angry kid, and fighting was just something I loved to do. And I became good at it. And so there's always been this exciting, uh, the, the excitement of a fight or, or, or a challenge that's always been appealing to me. Long ago, I got away from fighting. In fact, when I first started getting into massage and helping people, all my anger disappeared and I had a self-worth because I was making people's lives better through being able to fix their problems. Well, so I, I told that, and I'll get back to why later, a little bit later, as to why I, I even brought that up. Um, <clears throat> the horse that pretty, pretty much put me on the map was one called we call her the nag from hell. I call her the mare from hell, and her owner said, no, she's the nag from hell. Um, I called Pepper O'Shaughnessy down in uh, the Los Olivos, uh, Ojai, no, Los Olivos, uh, Buellton area, uh, per request of a good friend of mine. His ex, her ex-husband was a good friend of mine. He said, my wife Pepper has really into horses. Here's her phone number. He told her I was gonna call. So I called down, I said, hi, Pepper, Gary Whiting here. He said, oh, Terry said you'd be calling. So as I'm, as I'm talking, she said, she asked the question, are you comfortable with horses? I go, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to start my business, right? Oh, yeah, sure I am. No, no problem. I said, okay. So we talked a little bit more. She asked me five times, and I wasn't picking up on what she was really asking. She asked me five times, are you comfortable with horses? And I, every time I said, oh, yeah. The last time she said, we'll see. <laughs> well, I should have picked up on that one really quick. And, and so I um, um, went down, and this horse instantly did not like me. And so she had her baby out there with her. And what I didn't know, that this horse never allowed anyone to ever touch her baby, not even Pepper. So all of her babies, she produced great babies, but she would never let you touch her babies. She'd, she'd come after you, pin your ears and ah. So uh, I went to the pole area, I just put pressure, all of a sudden her head dropped down really quick, and her bottom lip just shaking like this, her eyes were closed, and it was just like, <sighs> this was a headache release point, same as for people. And so I started massaging her, and she was like, just loving this treatment. Well, I keep hearing these stories about this horse, and of course I had no background on her. And uh, her little baby's coming over, I'm playing with the baby and massaging mom at the same time. <laughs> and I don't know that this mom does not like her babies touched by anybody, won't let anybody in there. But she did me. And so I finished one side of her, and I went around to the other side, I'm standing there, and I'm, I'm going, wow, it's noisy around here. All of a sudden she kicks me. I wasn't even touching her. She, she'd kick him and she caught me in my left hip, but I was far enough out of the extension to where it was only a, about a hit like that. If I'd been six inches closer, would, she would have broke my hip. And I go, I moved my hip around. I said, well, I'm, I'm okay. And so I went ahead and um, finished massaging her. Her whole demeanor changed. She let Pepper touch her babies from that point on. Um, recently, I went to uh, the St. Kitts and I walked into this beautiful barn in the Caribbean at the racetrack and I'm just admiring this gorgeous place and they yanked me out of the way and this horse by the name of Yodala was spinning around ready to kick me. I didn't even see it coming. So they, they basically saved my life on that one. And, um, and I said, I'm going to fix that horse. And so I did. At, after I taught my program, I fixed that horse. And that horse, n total change in personality. But what was exciting to me, going back to why I even mentioned this thing about my earlier days, I like to fight. I love the horse that wants to kill me. I love the horse that really wants to hurt me. Because that's a horse that's hurting. That's a horse that's in a lot of pain. And I don't know, it, it, it's... I, I, I have such a good track record of working with these animals that are in pain that all they can do is just want to strike out at you. But when I'm that close to being hurt, it's just like being on the edge in a good fight. And uh, I know that I can pretty much bring any horse. I did see the movie Buck, however. The horse in the movie Buck, 
I don't think there's anything I could have done for that horse. <laughs> so I go, okay, I guess I can't fix them all because I would never even want to touch that horse after watching. I think they had to destroy that horse. It was such a maniac horse. Mm -hmm. But um, I've been kicked a few times. I've been bit. i still got the tooth mark here. Um, um, but after a while, you just learn to develop this extra sense to where when you're working on them, you're aware, you know where their feet are, you know what the ears are doing, you know where their eyes are, you know what's going on in the brain, you feel it, you sense it in their body. Um, when your life is on the line, you, you have a tendency to really, really closely pay attention. And, um, and I guess the, the, the benefit of that is I've become so aware of these horses that they can do damage so fast just like that, and if you, if, if you, be, you can become a victim that fast. It's a very powerful animal. Mm -hmm. and, and when you hit some of these acupressure points, you don't know what's gonna happen because acupressure points hold life's stories in there. Um, and being good or bad stories. And a horse can go ballistic, I've had that happen. A horse went ballistic on me one time and it didn't, wasn't even responsible for what it was doing because it was an old memory that was starting to come up. Mm -hmm. And it was like really clear and that horse was only reacted. And it caught me off guard, but fortunately I wasn't hurt. So you don't know what you're gonna get. It's a crapshoot sometimes on some of these X-race horses that have been abused. And, um, but it's, it's really, really worth the gamble, I think because of the satisfaction of turning a horse around. One of them was a horse named Freehouse. Uh, Freehouse won millions of dollars in his race career, belonged to Trudy McCaffrey. And Freehouse, they took him off the track and they took him up to the farm. They had me come in and work on him. They sedated him with a cocktail and for the first 40 minutes he tried, literally tried to kill me. He bit me, he bit, biting at me, striking at me, kicking at me with the back end, sl body slamming me up against the, the, uh, the barn. Forty minutes later, his head drops down. I finished the treatment on him. Uh, came back two weeks later, he was my best friend. Hmm. And he went out and won the Santa Anita Handicap a month later, which was a total upset because he never had placed very good on that track. And after I worked on him two times, he... Um, he did a total upset. So uh, I've been kicked. Fortunately, I haven't broken anything. And uh, for me, it's always I try to get this to my across to my students that I'm teaching you how to fix these problems when you come to this program. So don't shy away from them. And I have some students. When I started out, I was scared to death of horses, and it's not that way anymore because I have a track record of going going through these horses and um, but I start out scared to death like some of my students and but I overcame it and I some of these fears were unfounded because of superstitions that people had said you know one lady told me that these horses are going to try and kill you can't work on them for more than an hour well that wasn't true and so um, yep I, I, I've been kicked Okay. So in closing, as a peer pioneer in the field of equine massage, what made you feel you needed to teach your subjects you have selected for your program? <clears throat> the, the reason I have uh, focused in on a certain subject and moved away from uh, uh, traditional thinking, traditional education is going to be anatomy, marketing, and of course the massage. Well, I've never, I moved away from, almost totally away from anatomy because it wasn't necessary. I never had an owner ask me what muscle I was working on. I've never ever had a horse ask me what muscle I was working on. No one's ever quizzed me to see if I knew 600 muscle technical names and what their functions were. I mean, it just doesn't equate into the real world. And so I'm busy putting things into my program that do pertain to the real world. Um, 
almost all anatomy is out of the picture in my program because in the art of shiatsu massage, it simply is not needed. You just need to know acupressure points and meridian lines. You don't need to know uh, origin insertion. You don't know the you don't need to know the names of the muscles. You can learn that at home if you want. I give all that material to you. But what I'm going to put in place of it is hoof care. Well, why would we want to do hoof care? Why would I want to talk about hoof care? Well, if the horse, if your foundation of your horse is not right, um, and I've seen many uh, uh, horses that medial lateral balance was off, the toes were too long, and you end up with suspensory problems. Uh, my own horse, Misty, um, we thought we were going to have to put her down because no matter how we shoot her, uh, she just had this terrible, terrible limp, and she was in a lot of pain. Then when you heard about natural hoof care, the lady came out, took her shoes off, Four hours later, our little horse Misty walked off without a limp and, and happy. I go, whoa, I've got to learn this. So I looked into it. And then I started becoming aware of how the feet of these horses were so, they were terrible in many cases. And I go, well, if that horse's medial lateral balance is off, it's going to send trauma up into the joints. And, and uh, you put shoes on a horse, and when the horse hits that ground with his feet, the concussion factor has increased 60 to 80 percent. Well, that's going to travel up into the, the atlas. That's going to go into the shoulders. That's going to go into the hips. So I, I, I found that if the foundation wasn't right, the massage you did weren't, wasn't going to last. Also, I had to study saddle fitting because you could do a good massage. And if you didn't know anything about how a saddle was supposed to fit, the person gets back into a bad fitting saddle on the horse. And in my video, I cover that. And pretty soon the horse is acting up. And they say, see this massage stuff, it doesn't work. Same problem with my horse. And that's, that's what happened to me. I go, no, I know. I know I did a good job on that horse. That horse indicated it. And uh, so I started looking at saddles. I go, I need to learn about these saddles. And then I go, whoa, the positioning of the saddle wasn't right. And these, the rock twists and, and gullet heights weren't right on some of these saddles. I said, no, one of these horses are in pain. So I introduced saddle fitting into my program that my students would be able to identify a bad fitting saddle. And uh, I've just introduced a, uh, a new part of the program called How to Get People to Instantly Like You. And there's a lot of people, students who come to my program that need to be working on some, some skills that are going to help them be to be successful in life. If, if they don't like you, they're not going to pay you. They're not going to want to be around you. So that's into my program. Um, I think I'm just going more and more into the direction of refining, and I'm trying to get my students to dream. That's really that's my biggest that's my biggest goal right now is to get my students to dream. <clears throat> and I, I wrote a poem years ago. It goes something, I'll give you the Reader's Digest version. It goes, <clears throat> a bird with clipped wings soars no more. They only dream of flying and try and fly in vain. They're now held captive with this great earth rather than free to experience their worth. There is no dream too small or too great, but clipped wings seems to be man's fate. Well, by bringing the students up into this mountain, up into my world of beauty and, and something that's very real, the sound of birds, of watching a deer go by, watching the quail, just the silence and seeing the beauty of the stars and the smell of the brush and, and the trees and everything about this magical, powerful place. It starts my students off to dreaming and that's what I want, for them to live up to the incredible human potential. Day one in my program, I talk about the human being, why the human being, what the human being, where we got this ability to dream dreams and accomplish and achieve so much. We have such creative abilities, it's mind-boggling. And I try to give my students the understanding that if you are not going after dreams, if you are not achieving dreams, if you are not dreaming, dreaming then you're going to come to the end of your life someday and feel very unfulfilled because the reality is someday we are going to draw that last breath and we're going to look back and we're going to say if only I could do my life over. Well, I don't want people to have to say that to come to my program. I want them to go after those dreams. I'm going to read a letter. I just pulled this thing out 
Um, and it really, really sums up what I'm, I just mentioned to you, what I'm trying to achieve here. This young lady came to my program back, uh, I'm not sure when it was, I'm gonna say about seven, eight years ago, maybe nine years ago. Um, her name is Yvonne Allen, she's from Canada. And she, if you go to my website, you're gonna see I'm linked with Voice for the Horse. Um, or you can just go voiceforthehorse.com and you're going to um, see what a magnificent program she has, what she's created. Let me read her letter. When I attended Gary Whiting's School of Equine Massage for Horse and Rider, I chose this school because I could sense that Gary had more to offer than other equine massage schools that I was checking out in the, in the States. I am from British Columbia, Canada. And I, I will never put down another school, but I, I pioneered the first school that the students lived at. The second one that came about was from my students up in Oregon, she did that. I, I created a school that was totally different than where mainstream education was going. And now I'm starting to see them follow what I've done. And, and to pioneer one that go, works the heart is, is um, I, I would love to see the other ones start focusing on people rather than, than income. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, that I was checking out in the States. I wasn't mistaken. Although I was quite familiar with massage and had been doing it my way for years, I felt it would be best to become a certified, uh, to become certified as others were wanting me to massage their horses. And I was a bit concerned about being qualified to do so. Although I already was getting good results working on other horses. Well, I'm glad that I attended Gary's course because it validated what I did know. Not because of the anatomical structure of the horse, the, the anatomy, and knowing each muscle group inside and out, uh, rather because I worked on the horse with my senses or my sense of feel for them. And that's what I want my students to do. I want them to get out of their head and go from here. Sometimes I'll have my students close their eyes and I have them go through the shoulder. I said, what are you feeling? What, what are you seeing here with the eyes closed? I want them to feel. I want them to use their heart. Well, Yvonne, Yvonne did. I must say, my confidence soared after leaving the school because I learned techniques and a whole body massage program for any horse and knew that it was something that would be that would be excited about showing others. So I started my own equine massage short course, and the results my students were getting were amazing. I thought my I taught my students how to trust what it is they were doing and know they would only get better at the techniques by using them, and they did. What I noted with Gary's course, which was the extra special reason why I attended or why I wanted to attend, is that Gary went well beyond the horse. It's a school for horse and human. It's a school for you. It's a school for you. It's a school for people with problems, people who want answers. It's about their life, not just the horse. And, and so it, that was my program almost from the very beginning was about the uh, about the the person as someone interested in helping horses and their people too and better and better their lives i found that gary was all about that which is passionate to boot i like that canadian saying boot to boot <laughs> the personal growth one one has the opportunity to experience having taken Gary's course can be exponential. Now already being a person who envisions things in her life, I became very passionate about the world of equestrian and the more I emerged myself into it, the more I got taken deeper into many aspects of the industry that, may, that many do not experience. 
when learned of what I call the, the hard side for horses, I cannot turn back. My passion to make a difference in the lives of horses that had experienced trauma, neglect, and the otherwise becoming unwanted became a huge interest. So I started to write. Well, what she picked up in my program, just the overall program, started bringing something out in her other than just massaging horses. She actually started to write. She started tapping into something that she didn't really know existed. And, and she's done some phenomenal things as a result of going through my program. I started to write and dream about ways I can make this a better world for horses, not only in my backyard, but across North America, as we are so connected to one another. Near five years later, I have under full development a project that started just in one day when I could not sit at ease knowing the hardships many horses across the country and beyond were experiencing. Today, as in June 1st, 2011, I am about to launch my project, voiceforthehorse.com, across North America with children's riding competition in dedication to the wild stallion that was captured this past winter up in Dead Man Valley, British Columbia, Canada. His name was Atticus, and he was fortunate, unlike many of his herd, escaped the gateway to the slaughterhouse uh, due to him being handed down by our ministry to a horse rescue society. Even if you, if you ever felt you could be more, and this is really important, if you ever felt you could be more and never had the support around you to help you to grow and are a horse lover, I would highly recommend you take Gary's course because he is, he is one man that will support, guide, and help you build your dream well after your course is over. I cannot tell you of the countless hours that Gary and I have spent on the phone talking like friends, I might add, after many years of dialogue. Now I am figuring out that the now I am figuring that after these many years of taking off from the horse to write and create voice for the horse, I will let the project develop further on its own. With the foundation now put into place, and I know I will find myself back in the field with the most amazing of animals, the horse where I belong, caretaking, massaging them, and having fun. That's what sets my school apart, is Daring to Dream. When I wrote that poem, Dare to Dream, I started asking myself, how many ways have I clipped my wings? How many ways have I come up short because I did something that would stop me from dreaming? How many ways do we clip our wings and we don't realize the dreams we forget the dream, we get into the rut, into the routine. Marriages, I had one student, I'll just sort of end with this story because it's a beautiful story. Um, her letters on my website, I left her name anonymous on there. She came to my program, very unhappy in her marriage. She came to learn equine massage because her intent was to go home, divorce her husband, and carry on with her love for the horses. While she was here, something I said in my program started her to think. And of course, I've always done my program in really beautiful places. And she started to put some things together. She started to appreciate her husband all over again. And um, she went home and fell in love with her husband for the second time. A year and a half later, she has a ba they have another child. That guy is about 13 or 14 years old now. They go to horse shows. Their family is very connected with the horse show world. Every weekend they're off someplace. And this little guy has grown up to be quite the, quite the young man. He shoots and he ropes and he does it all uh, off the back of the horse. And he's up there as a top contender 
with people who have been doing this as adults for years. And I remember calling her and we talked and I brought up that her letter. She says, Yeah, that was a that was a big day in my life going to your school. She says, um, I said, somehow I feel connected to that little that, that boy of yours. She says, one of these days he's coming to your school. So that's what the program is about. Easy to teach. It's so easy to teach how to massage a horse. I can teach you in one day and then turn you loose and let you develop it. It's that easy, the way I present the program. It's not complicated. Massage is an innate technique. I just give you a little bit of structure. But I give you all the tools you need. You can go, you can set the world on fire, or you, or you can uh, uh, do whatever you want with those tools. But the one thing I do want to set on fire is each and every heart, if that's possible. It won't be. But for those who want it, come on to this program. For those who just want to learn massaging a horse, well, you'll learn that too. Um, but for, for you out there who really, really, really want some answers in life and, and just want to get off this merry-go-round and breathe for, for five days, well, welcome to Gary Whiting's Equine Massage School for Horse and Human. <laughs>